This is Kubota's tending to the bar when Paco walks e Walk carries the mangled and bleeding coyote into the Union. As soon as the boss lady lays eyes on her missing bartender, she pl the place gets quiet, fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, coyote is the color of wet spackle, and there's something new to her eye. Fear. This woman has faced down hellhounds, but the sight of Mrs. Kubataz are staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back and bleed on my floor. I'm sorry, Mrs. Kubata. I had a run that went bad. Soka, I can see that. Your arm is a mess. Was this your crusade again? Do not answer. It will only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracts me from my business. Hi, Mrs. Kolata. My apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. Yes, ma'am. Tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Mrs. Kobata, I can't afford a cyber arm. I am aware of your financial situation. When you are healed, you will discuss the concept of Giri, the debt of honor. Now go. Bleed elsewhere. Yes, ma'am. Well, that went well. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes away from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs, wipes away, and inclines her head to you. Domo arigato, diamond ring. That girl is precious to me. It's not often that we see acts like these in the barons. You have performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. We both know that words are mere air. Beyond my thanks, I offer you this remuneration. Please take it as a show of respect. I'm honored, Mrs. Kobata. Thank you. You're most welcome. I offer more than simple lodging. You'll find there is more to the Union than meets the eye. Below us is a small facility available exclusively for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it, you'll find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, fully equipped cyber dock, and a secure place to rest when the direct hits the fan, as they say. This place is a safe house. <laughs> You're quite the entrepreneur. Indeed. Normally, I require a percentage of the runner's income for the use of this facility, but as I said, you are family now. Consider it on the house. To gain entrance, play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. House may be a service. Is Mr. Delilah here tonight? Mr. Delilah in the back of the bar. That's usually where he does business. You mentioned Coyote's Crusade. What is it? Coyote grew up in the Royale, but managed to escape that life. However, her cousin was apparently not so lucky. He came to town about a year ago and fell in with the wrong circle. He was introduced to sim chips and became addicted to BTLs. Coyote has been tearing her way through chip houses for months now, searching for him, acting as a one-woman cleanup crew. If you don't mind, how did you get involved in any of this? I'm a former runner. Now I provide a safe haven and a marketplace for runners who need a trustworthy place to congregate and do business. Any Johnsons or fixtures here tonight? In addition to Mr. Delilah, you may wish to speak to Van Grace. He is often stage side. Van Grace is often a receiver of found articles, but he occasionally has work. I'll be going now. Ah, that's what she meant by stage side. Van Grace is busy taking up the talking on his comm link, checking his heads-up display, and monitoring to a runner standing nearby. All at the same time. He's an intense little man. You get the sense that he likes to look busy. I found Grace. Make it quick. Biz is good. Talk to me. Mrs. Kobata said you're a fixer. He still hasn't turned looked at you. He's going a mile a minute. Nothing for you tonight, sorry. I'm doing a thing right now. Important thing. Talk to you later. Oh, hey, lady. One more thing. He cover covers his comm link for a moment. Tilts his head your way, but you can see he's still staring at his HUD. I'm a fence, too. If you see anything you need to unload, please come see me. Ah. Need to finish this call. Perhaps another... Oh, wait. No. I'm thinking of someone else. I need to get the gems to Delilah, not Devon Grace. Hey, Johnny Queen. Johnny leans on his seemingly brand new mop and surveying the Union. Things was tip the other day. Mrs. Kobata said I should go down to the safe house, but I don't quite know where that is. Piano's a little out Check it out. Uh, first things first. I thought he was over here. The whole control bouncer in the immaculate suit stands as impassively as ever. The absence of dust on his broad shoulders is the only real indication that the man ever moves. He nods to you when you approach. Evening, as the coyote's back, looking only a little worse for wear. We have you to think for that. <laughs> Paco and I tracked her down. I always wondered where she saw in him, but I guess he ain't all bad. I'm just glad she's back. Couldn't stomach losing anyone else so soon after what happened to Sam. He's a big ol' sheepdog, aren't you? Not the comparison made of most trolls, but I'm happy to defy expectations. Might have asked a few questions? I haven't minded so far. Did you hear anything else about Sam? People are saying it was the Ripper. People say a lot of things about what they don't know or what they don't understand. You know where I can find a fence. Van Grace is at the bar near the stage. Door for the cyber eye. Can't miss him. I'm not even working for Mrs. Kobota. 
Crawled in here after I gobbled after I awoke. Mrs. Kobota took me in and gave me a job. I've been here ever since. If you have pay extra for a manicure on hands that big, it's not the size they charge for, it's the blood underneath the fingernails. Oof. <laughs> All right. That's a steadfast man right there. All right. Play chopsticks. Cute. As you slowly peck the notes on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. I descend the stairs into the Union safe house. The entrepreneurial Mrs. Kubota has combined everything a runner might need to a one-stop shopping experience. Thanks for letting me read that. Over here is our stash. This is the locker where we can swap items as needed. We can send anything to the stash automatically, no matter where we are at the time. Hi. Uh, I wish to speak to you. Make it quick. I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. Tell me about the night Sam Watts died. Sam's dead? Jeez, lady, <laughs> you really think this is the time? How did he die? This is going to have to wait. Someone needs surgery now. Okay, folks, I'm going to have to ask you to go sit in the waiting area. Watch some tri -vid or something. Some lady and I have work to do. All right, take it easy, Coyote. We'll be here when you wake up. You said anything about me going to sleep? Just give me something to bite on. You're tough, kid, but you're not that tough. Okay, Coyote, let's take a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me? Coyote. I earned this face. I'm being stupid. I'm going to keep it. End of story. Whatever you say, kid. She sings a siren. <laughs> syringe into Coyote's thigh. Nighty night. Coyote looks both better and worse than you last saw her. All the gaping holes are plugged and she's sporting shiny new cyber arm. But now that the adrenaline is worn off, it's clear that she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks to the miracle of modern science combined with Doc Castle's magical healing powers, I'm almost good as new. Better, really. You ready for some questions now? Coyote looks genuinely sad. About Sam. Yeah? I can't say I'm surprised he's dead. Sam was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? Tell me about him. Here you liked him. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. Eh, no accounting for taste. <laughs> me too. You are friends? Yeah, that's why I'm here. Got it. Then you know. He was a charmer, wasn't he? I guess I knew him the best of anyone here. Sorry, he's gone. You served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? It's a pretty average night. Regular crowd, as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake? Yeah, you know him. Met him. He's a charmer, too. She bites her lower lip. I like gingers. <laughs> Cute. Anyway, Jake and Sam were having a few. Well, Jake was having a few. Sam was tossing it back butt good. Eventually, he got loud, the way he sometimes did, when he mixed drinking and who knows what. Mrs. Kobota wanted him ejected. Mr. Kluve wasn't around, can't remember why, so she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out back into the alley, and that's the last I saw of Sam. He said he got loud. Do you remember what he was saying? She thinks, Standard Sam Dreck, how he wanted to grow up writ how he grew up rich and didn't deserve this, how he hated his mother, how he loved his mother. Pretty pathetic stuff. Did he have enemies? She thinks, enemies? That's hard to say. Sam partied hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. I was butt whooped on more than one occasion, but no, I don't think he had any enemies, at least none that I'm aware of. Where did Sam live? On the streets, mostly, he'd occasionally convince someone to let him flop on their couch, but he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks he used one of the night before I saw him last. How bad was his drinking? If it was just the drinking, it wouldn't have been that bad. But Sam wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved nitro, whatever he could get his hands on. It wasn't like that, but once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try to forget about it. Sam was sick? Dying. Didn't you know? Everyone could tell. You just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looked good, even. All better. Just like that. He said his mom helped him out. Never said how, though. Thanks, Coyote. Now I need you two to do something for me. What do you need? I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me about the Royale run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run when we recover. I will. Uh, you didn't get the gems, specifically. Anyway, I want to talk to this crazy lady. In Shadowrunner circles, the term doctor is often used quite liberally to describe any sawbones, the needle, and the thread. But in the case of the Union's resident medical expert, nothing can be further from the truth. The safe house boasts a fully equipped medical suite complete with shamanistic fetishes. This is the sixth world medicine of the highest caliber. 
The doctor herself is an unassuming sort, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely, if not for the sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle. I understand you're instrumental in bringing Cody back to us. Thank you for that. You're welcome, Doc. I gotta say, that was some work you did on her. You don't seem to be going to waste down here. I praise for a simple arm swap, especially since she wouldn't let me repair her face. She knows you eyeballing the facilities. I can tell you're surprised to find a full-service med bay under a dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. For a purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there is no better place to set up a practice. Patch runners up, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for their runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Uh, we've pretty much covered most of this. What's that on your shoulder? This is the guy who supports the healing rituals I perform on my patients after surgery, dramatically reducing the recovery time. Not standard procedure, of course, but the results speak for themselves. You're a shaman, too? Modern medical technology makes surgery less disruptive than it used to be. It's still an ordeal for both the body and the spirit, requiring extensive recuperation to properly heal. I am trained in the way of the spirit world as well as the scientific world. I do my best to heal the whole patient. As I already have. And, yeah, <laughs> we can legit start busting out the uh, heavy-duty stuff. Now, I'm going to get more into this uh, later because it's expensive. Tell me more about trauma kits. Trauma kits are fully automated stabilization units that include defibrillator spray on synthetic skin and medical nanomachines. They can save a runner's life if you move fast enough. If you're bleeding out, one of those can get you back on your feet. Exactly, but you have to be quick. This is Doc Wagon's own field tech, but even their stuff has limits. And we'll get more of that later. All the shops are now down here. We have Algernon over here. Past the bar, the edge of the safe house becomes somewhat indistinct due to the magical haze running a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body peddles his worldly wares. Good evening, young dwarf, and welcome to this humble home we call the Union. I am Algernon Half-Dream. To ease your way through the sixth world, I offer you the best in magical foci, spells, fetishes, and conjuring of spirits. Not my thing. Eric is also down here now, and he will sell armor upgrades every couple of runs. Uh, TB Gruberman, I believe, also deals in firearms, I want to say. Theodore Buster Gruberman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with a precision that suggests straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high, and tight, as they say, and the neatness this presents is only compromised by the uneven tusks protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in this picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin the line of his suit. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful, and he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker Buster Gruberman at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, or ordnance, I am your man. How can I help you? What exactly do you sell? Things that go bang in all shapes and sizes, plus other odds and ends on occasion. Consider me your own personal armory. All weapons are guaranteed to meet strict UCAS military spec or your money back. In addition, I can handle routine maintenance repairs and upgrades if you so desire. If that wasn't enough, I also teach a safety and instructional course every weekend. This week they're covering bayonets. Mark my words, they're making a comeback. <laughs> what you got? Uh, I mean, he has a, another shotgun. The only upgrade is that it has better ammo capacity. So I'm going to wait until I get something better. Nothing right now, thanks. And this dwarf over here handles cyberware. Like I said, Mr. Clean is down here as well. Every inch of the tech alcove is covered in chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and many other things that you can't identify. In the eye of this techno bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any Matrix hardware or software that exists, and if it doesn't exist, then I can get it made for you. Any questions I can answer, any gear you need. What is a deck? Jack into the Matrix, or in the context of a run when you jack into the local node of the facility you're in. The deck determines how many programs and ESPs you can carry from the firepower of your base Matrix attack. Decks have IP. When a deck's IP is reduced to zero, you get booted out of the system, and it will hurt. It does. You actually can suffer psychosympathetic shock from it. 
Programming the Matrix allows you to defend your avatar against countermeasures and enemy deckers. There are a wide variety of different programs for attack and defense at different power levels. As it progresses, the decker you can come to use more powerful versions. What's an ESP? Johnny, you want to take this one? Sure. When you infiltrate a facility on a run, you have a team. When you jack into the Matrix, you are alone. That's where ESPs come in. An ESP is a highly advanced artificial life program. When you deploy it, it manifests as a team member in the Matrix. Different types of ESPs have different abilities. What you got? I'm not going to be using any of this. <laughs> this is outside Rinko's wheelhouse. Uh, but that doesn't mean that we won't in future, uh, future installments. I'm being rude. Let me introduce you to our resident Decker and my good friend Johnny Queen. On the same overalls that you saw months upstairs down here, leaning over workbench crammed with circuit boards, cables, and chips, Johnny Queen seems a totally different person. You get the impression that Johnny was once as hot and as invisible as the most infamous Deckers today. Good to be down here. Happy to help if I can. How is decking used? Decking skills often used just on terminals in the real world to get information, hack doors, etc. But occasionally a run will have the option of a requirement to go into the local matrix land of the facility you're infiltrating in order to gain access to valuable information or control over more important things in the real world. Why are you dressed as a janitor? Did I stand out upstairs? No, janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and getting out of, out of system so clearly that no one knew I was there. At the Matrix runs that earned me my rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of a part of me. Is it true you're part of Echo Mirage? Let me take this one. Listen, I've known the guy for over a decade, and he's been smart enough to not tell me. So he's sure not going to tell you. For your health and his, drop the subject. See you guys around. Yep, and now we get the option to take a little nap. The bunk is a mess and reeks of booze. Switching through the sheets, blankets, and pillow, you find an old photograph that was seen a lot of wear. Look at the image. The picture is a blonde boy and girl, both about age 14, sitting on a dock on the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy has his arm tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Check the back. Written on the woman... In a woman's hand are the words Sam and Jessica, Lake Sammamish State Park, Summer 2040. Now that we've done that... Oh, we have a bunch of karma we've gained. So, I'm going to improve some of my combat abilities, because the last thing you want to do is be caught off guard. Obviously, we need to up ranged combat. So I'm going to put another one into shotgun. I can't up dodge just yet, but I will next time I get another point of karma. And... I actually cannot save down here, but that's fine. I believe I can, right up here. That's what we're going to call it for now. But join me again next time, as we not only speak to another Johnson, and start getting work done in order to find out the mystery of the dead man switch. And I'll see you there.